In this video I will show you the layout of my ESP32 power over ethernet ceiling sensor. I had some issues finding sources for some parts so I will show you how to find alternative parts. And in the end I will guide you through the PCB ordering process. My requirement for the layout was to have a circular design and it should have a diameter of exactly 10 centimeters. So I came up with this shape where all of the parts are located on one side of the PCB. It wasn't easy to fit all of these components to this PCB, but in the end I always remembered how tiny the board from Olimax actually is. It has to fit on this PCB. So this right here is the final layout it's divided into different parts so at the top right here we have the power supply based on power over ethernet and the power over the ethernet comes in here of course this is the ethernet check it gets transformed into lower voltages we have the ethernet interface this is the brain of the pcp it's the ESP32 and then all of this here is different sensors and also these three infrared diodes spread out on the edges of the PCB. I went with a four layer design so I have signals on the top layer. I have a 3.3 volt layer. There is no 3.3 volt uh, signal right here and so I also use this layer to route my 5 volt line and you need to be careful to not split the layer and that's why I rooted it on the edge of this layer. Then we have a ground, which is always nice to have a solid ground. There is no other signal, it's just ground. And I also used the bottom layer for signals again. And what you can also see, I filled up all the areas that I don't need. So all of these areas are connected to ground. I added a lot of wires to connect to the inner ground layer so that it gives me this nicely grounded surface. This should mitigate EMC problems in both ways. We can also look at it in 3D. So if we take a look at the 3D viewer, I added 3D models to most of my parts. And so this is what the final design should look like. And one thing that I noticed is my movement sensor should be lifted up slightly because the ethernet jack is too close. But other than that, I think that looks pretty nice. And so the next step is to generate fabrication files. And so I installed a nice plugin for KiCad. If you go to plugin and content manager, there is a nice PCB way plugin, actually two of them. And I installed both of them. And the second one is a one-click button that generates all of the required production files, which is very useful. And if they're installed, you can see them right here. I will just press it and it generated all of the production files like this. We get a bill of materials with all of the parts listed. We get Gerber files. This is the actual PCB design that shows all of the layers that we're going to fabricate. You also get the net list and the positions with all of the orientations of the parts. The next step was to look through the list of components and see if they are available on Mauser, for example. I looked at Mauser. You can also look um, at DigiKey or Farnel or any other of these places. Most of the parts are available with some exceptions. So for example, this transistor right here, if we take a look at the data sheet, it's from a company that I never heard of and it wasn't available at Mausa. So I have two options. I could buy it in China or I could replace it with something similar. And I found a replacement. This is my replacement. First, before you replace a part, you should always look into the schematic and see how it is being used. In this case, it's this designator right here. It's located right here. And so all it does is it just turns on or off and enables this power line right here. 
it should have a low threshold voltage in order to switch on with this very low voltage levels of 3.3 volts and it should have a low on resistance so that we don't get a hot transistor and also the internal parasitic capacities should be around the same in order to get the same switching characteristics but it's not that important in this case if we take a look at the replacement you see that it has the same voltage rating and it has an even higher continuous current you need to double check that it is a p-channel MOSFET and the original maximum threshold voltage this is the level where it's guaranteed to turn on is 1 volt and with the replacement it's 0.8 volt so it's better and also the on resistance is lower so everything looks great with this one I'm sure it will work fine but there are some parts that are trickier for example this connector <laughs> I only found it on Alibaba because this is not just a connector this also has the internals for power over Ethernet so I will continue my research but for now I might have to order it directly from China if you know an alternative please let me know in the comments and also I didn't find any replacement for the DC DC converter I might order it from this website where I never ordered from but it looks legit and then <laughs> and now that I'm pretty sure that I will get all of these components that I need it's time to order the PCB and there are a lot of places online where you can buy PCBs I will use PCB way for this project and I will guide you through the process so I will click on PCB instant quote if you don't have a design yet but you would like to know how much a PCB would cost then you can manually enter the size but in my case I already have a design so I go to quick order PCB and then I can add my Gerber files what we need is the zip file that was generated by the KiCad plugin and I just upload it if you have a four layer design it might ask you which layer um, has which name please fill in the layer order from the top side view to the bottom side view if I open up the zip file I see four couple layers so this is my my top layer FCU I will copy this name and enter it here and then this is my 3.3 volt layer in the middle of the PCB and this one is my second layer in the middle of my PCB it's my ground layer and this one is my bottom layer and then submit and we're good to go I also see a picture of how it will look like this looks great so you can double check if everything looks fine also with the bottom side great the first thing is you can have single pieces or you can panelize your design you can fit multiple PCBs on a panel and this will make it cheaper and easier for mass production in mass production you always try to use up as much space as possible and you can also combine different designs in one panel with this project I'm not going to use panels the size was already detected the next thing that I need to select is my order quantity I will go with five pieces because I don't even know if it works um, most likely the first version will have some errors inside then you can pick the material there are a lot of different materials the standard PCB is called FR4 so for 99% of your projects use FR4 if you have special thermal needs you might need to use aluminum or copper and I never heard of Rogers but 
HDI means high density. So if you're designing, I don't know, a smartphone, for example, you might need to use high density because this gives you the option to create special wires. Wires that only connect two layers at a time. This can be used to shrink down the size of a design significantly. Then you have different types of FR4. We can pick according to your temperature needs. Um, this design is not going to get hot, so we can use the cheapest option here. My designs never get hot. Which is already selected, by the way, because this one is more expensive. Then we select the thickness of the PCB. Keep in mind, the standard thickness is 1.6 millimeters. If you make it thinner, then of course you save some space, but it gets more flexible and this might damage your components. You need to balance this. And if you want to save money, you should go with 1.6. Then the next thing that we need is the minimum track spacing. This is how thin your traces and the space between the traces are. So you need to make sure in your design to not violate these sizes. In my case, I went with six mil. When you design a PCB, you need to make sure that these values are kept. The same is true for the minimum hole size. So all of the wires and all of the holes inside of the PCB need to be 0.3 millimeters minimum. If you need to make the design smaller, and you need smaller holes, then this means that the cost increases. Then the next thing is solder mask. This is nice. You can pick different colors. So I will go with a white PCB and the black silk screen. Great. Then you have the option to print something to the PCB, which looks pretty nice. I never used it myself, but you can do crazy designs. Um, like this one looks amazing, but yeah, I'm not going to use it for this design. Edge connectors, so you can create something like this if you want to. Well, in this case, I don't. A surface finish. You have all types of different surface finishes. And usually in the U, you should use lead free because you have to comply with the restriction of hazardous substances directive. But of course, if you just use the PCB yourself, then no one cares. If you want a really nice finish, you can use immersion gold. You see it on some PCBs, for example, on this one. This is immersion gold. Hassel is, and Hassel gives you this molten solar finish, which is the silver finish and some other stuff that I never used. You can also decide if you want your wires, that are the holes that connect different layers, if you want your wires to be tented or you can plug it with, with the solder mask completely. Then the hole is closed with the solder mask or you do not cover it at all. So you don't have solder mask on top of the wire. So this is nice if you want to measure on the wires, then you should go with the last option because then basically every wire allows you to connect and take measurements. Otherwise you can't really make measurements because you have the solder mask on top. Then finish copper. This allows you to define the width of the copper layer. So the, the PCB in the end is made out of multiple copper layers. The width of the outer layers can be defined here and the width of the inner layers can be defined here. This is getting very expensive. If you're using a thicker copper, your um, price will increase dramatically and usually you don't need it. If you need to have high current flow on your PCB and very thin traces, then you have to increase your copper thickness. There are reference tables for how thick your, your trace has to be in order to support a certain amount of amps without heating up too much. And then you can choose to remove the product number. No, I don't care about the product number. You can leave it. The last thing that you should think about is the SMD stencil. 
So it makes sense to add an SMD stencil. If you have a laser cutter at home, you can try to create your own using paper. I made a video about it, but yeah, I wouldn't recommend it. And once you're done, you can save it to your card. If this video was helpful, please like and please subscribe to this channel if you're interested in Arduino, ESP32, or if you're interested in if this PCB will burn after its arrival. Leave a comment down below if you have some questions or if you would like to mention some additional information. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.